Hello and welcome back to Ment FX. So in the last video, we dealt with a little bit concerning the importance of understanding your directional bias and using that with the complements of the tools that you have learned in the free YouTube channel and in the mentorship to get involved with the footprints of smart money in the market. Now, right now we're going to take a little bit of a look kind of in depth to that and show you the complex side of it or a little bit of the more complex side to it when you're in a market like currently euro usd so as a lot of you know in euro usd we currently do have a market that is moving in such a way that is hard to really understand exactly where it wants to head and it's kind of in a little bit of a limbo but i'm going to show you how even despite that we were able to catch an absolutely beautiful one to 22 on from Thursday to Friday that played out overnight and worked beautifully with the addition of other trades that could have ran the same amount. However, we partialed them um, a little bit early. Again, if we go into the Discord, so very quickly, this Discord and everything in here, um, including all these text channels and all this private course content is available to you on this website and only this website right here, launchpass.com slash mindfx slash effects. You can find this in the description of these YouTube videos. Now, Again, let's go into the um, trades right here. As a lot of you will see, we had a lot of things we were sending out on EURUSD with expectations on it. Um, this is Bitcoin, I believe. Yeah, so on EURUSD, this was the first trade we basically got into at the start of the week. Uh, actually, no, sorry, on Thursday, because these were all on the one minute chart. We had these continuations lower, um, partials along the way. So as you can see, we partial very early at Manth FX. This is the way I like to trade. Not everybody does this. On the way down, we had areas where we were expecting continuing selling pressure from. And as a result, we were able to find these Wyckoff scenarios that began to play out. And from those Wyckoff scenarios, we had new cells and opportunities that we looked at. And as we had those cells continue to pan out, we got involved earlier and later with the exact same rule from last time concerning the two order blocks being present on breaks down, which is fine. This will happen and it can happen. Um, with more partials being taken at certain areas and continuing to run. So we had this running and we had both of these running after partialing and on the way down, we had the same thing happening again, looking for more um, areas to get back into. So as a lot of you can see, uh, my trading does not revolve around getting involved in one area and letting it run because I understand that price can turn around with the idea of liquidity being met and then price going to find higher prices or lower prices. And as a result, along the way, I manage my trades the way I want to manage them. And the way I manage them is as per structural lows um, for the for the initial entry. So we can talk about that in the future. I'll probably cover this with um, some of you guys in the mentorship during this weekend and maybe the next one. We'll see about that. But the reality is there's many ways to partial in this. There's many ways to manage your trades. There's a ton of successful ways to do it. I know some people that manage it by just letting the whole thing run at break even. I know some that like to lock in and get back in. I know some that like to lock in and just let it run. I like to lock in profits. I like to get back in lower. I like to lock in profits. I like to get in lower. I like to lock in more profits. I like to get back in lower. And we continued this until we had a beautiful five second entry off of this right here. Some people were able to get on this one. Some people got in a little bit earlier. And then we had that finally run all the way down to our four hour area that we were looking at, which was a one hour low. Um, and then we had price turn around. So this was actually a very lucky catch that we got just here and then turned around. But it's also a great explanation of the idea that after a higher time frame area or a structural point or a liquidity area is met, price can easily either break, continue breaking down to new order blocks lower or turn back around to find more liquidity areas here, filling more inefficiency before going lower or become a reaccumulation continue higher, right? So what's interesting is despite the fact that all of this structure thing is very easy to kind of understand, right? You have you either have bullish and you're looking for bullish areas to buy at or you're bearish and you're looking for bearish areas to buy at. This in, in theory is actually very easy, but when you put it into practice, it's hard to understand because price is constantly shifting back and forth between these bullish runs and bearish runs, especially if you're operating on the lower time frames. So what I mean by that is that is why a lot of my partials exist in areas like this, because this market here can continue doing this now, right? But it also can just as easily as it did come here, come here, come test this order block or even inside of here and continue way higher. That is very possible too. As you learn smart money, for, especially for a lot of people in the mentorship that have um, have been doing it with me right now, you guys have got this stuff down pretty well. Price can switch around and move back and forth and change direction multiple times. That doesn't mean our bias is wrong, like we spoke about in the last video. All it means is we need to be aware of that and trade in um, 
and trade with that mentality in our minds, okay? So what do we have happening here? Um, you guys can go take a look at this. This is a refined order block on, I think, the monthly or the weekly. I don't really know. I don't really remember, but I remember refining this. Again, uh, we didn't trade this exact area. I think I was looking at this with someone and just explaining it to them. Um, maybe somebody in the metrosheep caught it, but I didn't catch this at all, so I'm not going to take props for that. But there is Wyckoff in there as it touched it, and you'll see that you actually had a great opportunity to get involved in sales all the way here that would be in very, very deep profits here. Especially, I mean, you guys can see the RR on that even if you took the open of... Um, the refinement here, or I'm not even sure what that is. That already ran one to thirty, yeah. So that's insane. But again, that wasn't that wasn't caught, so that's not very important. Now, what's what's very important to realize, right? Again, on the weekly, we spoke about the fact that we're bullish, and we're going to be bullish on this until we're we're told otherwise, right? So we're just going to continue expecting any of these things here. That's completely fine. Those expectations ring true, right? You most likely have GS and any other. Um, big hedge funds or banks that actually control these markets getting involved or already starting to transfer a lot of um, sells into buys or whatever it might be undergoing maybe some accumulation later and continuing right that can fully happen it could also come lower right that it could happen but we're not looking at that right now because these are the weekly charts and that's not very interesting or important to us now on the daily as a lot of you probably have you most likely have been watching this area here right so this as you all know is an order block and we were watching uh that looking for potential buys from that area and you can see the 50 percent held perfectly if you use the body of this it held perfectly if you refine that to a four hour area you'll notice that even that um off of potentially this order block here right held perfectly maybe if you refine that a little bit further you might have missed um this is going to be very important for some of your for your, some of your understanding too so we're going to kind of go over this a little bit yeah so this is pretty much the refinement i'd go for you might have been able to refine here but you know that didn't get hit so we're just going to use this for a second and talk about it right here so what's interesting is if you were not on a low enough time frame for this specific um area here you'll notice that price took off relatively quickly and didn't really give you a chance to get back in at order blocks in these areas right potentially you were watching this and the breaks higher you started to get involved in the order blocks here and we're able to take it higher but the reality is just because you have a bias and your bias is correct does not mean that you are going to be presented with an opportunity but the beautiful thing about understanding that is that you'll never have to be feeling like you need a FOMO in because along the way there are going to be order blocks that give you more opportunities along the way there's going to be order blocks that you miss but along the way there are going to be more order blocks that give you more opportunities more order blocks that give you more opportunities and so on and so forth right as you move your way up that is the that is the part of the game understanding that you don't need to fomo in and understanding that you need to have a refined strategy and approach to the way you want to enter or else you're going to go broke okay now at the same time that this was shifting bullish we also need to recognize that the daily is still running bearish which means that even though this lower time frame is starting to shift bullish inside there right this can easily just be a move back up to this continuing bearish push and a continuation lower to order blocks in here to order blocks in here to order blocks in here because the reality is all of these order blocks are valid for a continuation higher okay and what i mean by that is that is why we need to be very flexible with our directional biases and the areas we want to be um bullish or bearish from understanding that if we're not using the the last possible low that a, 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 a that a ob or an area of interest can be fully invalidated but the bias is not invalidated at all but let's take a look at what we actually were looking at so as you all notice we had this low created in the market and then we finally had that low taken out now that low got taken out from two areas right same thing again there was this order block here and there was this order block um basically right here or more importantly from here to here okay and we're not going to talk about exactly how we refine that we're going to we're going to cover a little bit more of that in the mentorship but a lot of you can probably understand it there's imbalance here take the last low understanding mitigation can happen here take the the last high understanding that price could come anywhere inside here to to distribute and then potentially break down to new lows right now that four hour area um going to be honest with a lot of you i had it down to this area here um actually added to two areas so I had it to this blue area up here and I had to this light blue area. Now notice what happened at price that area. I didn't have the, the my my points of the strategy were not meant, so I didn't want to get involved there. I had no no interest in, right? Again, if you were a swing trader, um, this could have been a potentially absolutely fine area to get involved in. 
um, partials at this level because there are lows here and price can reverse and continue way higher at 1 to 1.19. It is what it is, right? And continuing lower to potentially new lows back into that daily order block and then potentially even lower, right? To some other areas and you can increase that RR and that's one way to swing. Another way to swing is to wait for that higher refined area, which was that area up there, right? With that same stop, loss, just above that high even. We don't even need to refine that stop loss, right? And that same partial that was a 1 to 1.3 now becomes a 1 to 8, right? So that's a 4% partial. Uh, actually, it's right here. One to eight. Yeah, pretty much a 4% partial or lower, right? To these areas here or these order blocks here. One to 14, one to 17, one to 24, one to 26, right? And beyond because again, it can go lower one to 30, right? So again, you're starting to see how this practical or the or theoretical idea of structure can actually be a lot... Uh, a lot more complicated when we get involved in it, but it's still the same thing. Structure is still moving the same way and we're still thinking about it the same way. So we had this four hour breakdown here and that breakdown came from this area and we had that area refined. So what we're expecting is when price gets here, we're already expecting sales to occur, okay? So that's where we know we're looking for what? Distribution, right? So a lot of you have understood this. If you know, or you already have a preset bias, then you should know what you're looking for. And that's how you can sometimes differentiate as you see in the white call videos from accumulations, from distributions, from reaccumulations, or from redistributions. Okay. So as price makes its way up here, um, you start to see all those areas we got involved in uh, 15 minute. Again, we start to make something that looks like Wyckoff, but notice how it's not tapping into the area that's important to us. So this acts as a premeditative area that might act as maybe a buying climax, right? So even though it might look like a buying climax, AR, ST, up thrust, UTAD breakdown, the reality is it's just its own buying climax, something like that. But what's funny is if you did end up selling this order block, notice the profit that you still had off of this technically wrongly presumed Wyckoff distribution, right? So again, this is the idea, that idea of the GJ, um, the one hour video on GJ that we created where you guys saw the one minute distributions create a larger distribution, right? And this is the idea of a 15 minute distribution forming a longer, more like 30 minute distribution, right? So if I showed you this, it's kind of easy to see. Let's get rid of all this, right? Just take a look at this. You guys can see the distribution, right? Here's a snowflake right here, right? And you can see we have buying climax, automatic rally, secondary test, maybe a sign of weakness in B, potentially an upthrust, move down, creating liquidity in this area where we have like a trend line or something like that, right? So, we're so again, retail or emotional people are getting FOMO'd in, are starting to get involved, are seeing this, wanting areas to hold, and we have the liquidation of that. Here's a UTAD forming those order blocks right here, forming the order blocks on the way down and giving you entries on the way down. As you can see, even areas like this, I mean, I circle it and you can already see that we had it drawn out. There's Wyckoff in there. So that's where the that's where all those um, cells came from, right? So again, this is all after the fact. And the reason it is is because the mentorship is for the people that want to be there during the fact and see it occur and be part of it. This is for after the fact where a lot of you that are trying to learn and understand it yourself can go back, study and understand it, okay? Because again, this is all free for you. So, you know, there, there, there's nothing that is being really hidden from you. You can take this and become profitable using it. Um, so as you can see, that 15 minute distribution became a lower term five minute distribution, which in turn created order blocks that we left behind. And as you can see, these biases of bearishness are still held despite the fact that order blocks along the way are being technically invalidated, right? So all these order blocks here, what's interesting is I was actually watching these order blocks. So I had, I think I had these refined to like these areas here. And then I had this last area here and this got invalidated, never gave me a setup. This got invalidated, never gave me a setup, but then this one got tapped and still didn't give me a setup up here. I missed it, right? There were people in the mentorship that took the cell from here and that was beautiful cell. Um, their stop loss just above here and you can see how quickly that ran. Um, you can see how low it ran too. Very, very nice sell by them. But I still waited because part of my strategy is understanding confirmation and waiting for that to occur. So as a result, I waited for the confirmation. I got the confirmation I wanted and I entered as per the confirmation. And then we partialed along the way. You'll notice that my partials are not the actual one to 22 run. So again, a lot of you that are seeing these crazy RRs, the one to 100s, one to 200s, those happen. But when those happen, I'm not locking in 100% or in this case, 22%. The reality is I'm locking in the original one to two. Then I'm locking in an extra, oh, where is it? So let's actually move this over an extra one to four, right? Then I'm locking in the actual lows at which I wanted price to get to, which was this low here. So even though I didn't get to this low, I got to the low I wanted, which was this area here, which is again, um, that liquidity area on the one hour, right? And that was a nice one to 22. So 
this one to 22 didn't actually run 22%. I didn't make 22% in three hours. The idea is I could have, right? But it's that you made 22 RR, right? You understood how to get a 22 um, RR return and partial and, and actually um, trade and manage your trade properly throughout the course of this trade to lock in things along the way and not have to get emotional about it. Now, what's interesting is along the way, you'll see there were actually opportunities for nice re-entries. There might've actually been an opportunity for re-entries in here, right? I don't know what how you would have done it. I wasn't watching this. I was asleep during this actual move and it collapsed me at the low I wanted to collapse it at because I knew the next day was Friday. So I was looking at a, at a run of just this low. So that's just a four hour low, we ran it and now we might be um, continued bearish. But again, I'd wanna um, confirm that with our arsenal of confirmations, unless we want to just shift bullish, which again is fine for me because like I said, Euro USD is in a little bit of a limbo right now and direction does not have to be distinct, right? Because if it was distinct, everybody would be able to do it and everyone would be able to see it. Um, which, you know, which is, and, and you guys, you guys see it yourself, the market moves in such a way that it creates intermediary highs and lows 24 seven, tricking people in and out of the price, right? But if you're getting involved using some strategy that you put together yourself, whether it's using all these consoles that you have available to you, or whether it's in the mentorship and you like the way somebody trades in there and you put a strategy together that looks a lot like theirs, then if you manage properly and trade properly, you can be fine. Because the same way that retail can still make money trading their ways that I can't even understand, to be honest at this point, right? You can make money trading a way that actually does make sense and can make you proper RR. And again, don't sue me. This is just my opinion, um, not financial advice. So again, this is just a little breakdown of what we caught over the last few days, how we caught it actually over the last literally Thursday and Friday. So literally today, this position collapsed today, which was great. And the way we got involved was, you know, with everything you've learned so far, the refinement of OBs, structural holding, um, and the white call from those areas. So again, this is kind of like a part two to the video we just came out with, which was the importance of understanding your directional bias and how the directional bias can form trades for you in the market and how they can basically occur almost anywhere, right? So this is the idea of fractals. You could have been a, you could have been a swing trader on this and properly manage your trade, or you could have waited to be a scalper on this and then made it into a swing trade, right? But the reality is it still only lasted one day. So I guess you'd call it a day trade. Either way, that's what I wanted to talk with you guys about today. Um, stay tuned for potentially the Wyckoff for beginners breakdown coming up in the next week or the next two weeks. We'll see how that goes, especially as I'm finishing up with some important things on my side. Thank you so much for all the support and I'll see you guys in the next one.